Hello and welcome back to New York Gold. Today I want to go over something a little different. I want to go over some photography stuff. Like, um, I guess you can call it like tips and tricks. The Northeast Council of all the aquarium societies on the East Coast, they had a photo competition. I was in it, a couple of other YouTubers were in it, and I don't know, they had a pretty good uh, showing of people. And they had a, a couple of different categories and divisions. And we got lucky and we were able to watch the judge, in this case, uh, critique the image. Now we get a better understanding of what they're looking for. I mean, in a whole, we kind of know what, you know, they're looking for as far as a good image and not a good image. But as far as certain little quirks, like this judge really had it in for uh, fake plants. Apparently they wanted to look as natural as possible and not look like an aquarium. They don't want to see gravel and stuff and distractions. So I have a, a little list of things. I broke them into three categories, preparation, composition, and the final product. And I'm gonna to try to break these into the three steps. It looks like a lot on paper, but when it's all, you know, it's just a good guideline that we can follow or anyone can follow for uh, uh, the next photo competition and just to get uh, just to get better shots. I'm gonna to try to do this on, uh, on the computer and I don't know, we'll figure something out. So uh, let's see, let's see if this works. First up is preparation. One of the biggest issues is any kind of drips and crap on the front of the glass or even on the other side of the glass both sides so i don't i don't want to hear this crap about it. you can take regular dollar store glass cleaner and spray it on to the tissue and then you could clean the glass like this and i don't want to hear anything about your poisons pesticides and crap it's not getting in there cut it out Cut it out already, please. You clean the outside of the glass. So that's step one. Another thing is the glare. The glare is the toughest part to work around. And you can see, you can see me in there. And you can see all the stuff in the background. It's a real pain in the neck. So you really wanna look through your viewfinder and see what's going on in the back. Try to kill all these background lights. I mean, you can still see me a little bit, but if you could shut off all the lights, that would be best. And that's, uh, that's a good tip. All right, another tip to kill the glare is this. Put your camera through a hole in a pizza box. This is matte black. And then when you put it up to the glass, it kills out all the reflection behind you. And you, can, uh, you can't use your flash, but you can take a picture that way. So you can do the same thing with your phone. You stick your phone behind it, do the same thing. Easy, cheapy, I don't, even vegans eat pizza, so please, I don't wanna hear you can't afford this piece of cardboard with black spray paint. Easy tip. Got it? Another one is distracting objects. It's hard to see, I think, on the, but there's some snails hanging on the glass and it's just a couple more things for your cameras to fo camera to focus on that you don't want to focus on and I know for you sponge burb lovers out there and spudge boy me Bob he's got to he's got to go it's just it's just a distraction is it adding to the picture or is it taking away ask yourself that question and some of that stuff, you know, try to make it as natural as you can. So in this case, I would try to kill some of that background, move it in closer, and they don't want to see any parts of the tank in the picture. So you take something like this, and if there was a fish, the way we'd take its picture. Another thing is how close your subject is to the glass. Now when the fish are right up close to the glass, they do a much better job of getting that picture taken. But once they move to the back, it gets, it gets tougher for the camera. You gotta deal with the water and it's, you're gonna get a much better shot. The closer that guy is to the to me, to that glass, the better shot you're gonna get. So that's, uh, that helps a lot. And definitely the lighting. You gotta kinda set that up beforehand. Basically what you're looking for is to brighten everything up and to try to kill the shadows. So look at the shadows of the fish. You see how they change the shadows? 
in this case are bad. They just take away from the image. So maybe, you know, more overhead. I get an, an overhead light and this is coming from maybe the back or the side. You keep moving it around, whoops, and not bang it into the glass. You can find a sweet spot. There you go. But there's not much shadowing going on. So when you take a picture, if you can avoid using the flash, you won't get a shadow. And you won't have to Photoshop it out later. Last thing on preparation is don't don't use the zoom on your camera, on your phone. Now, don't be afraid to use your phone. These things take banging pictures. The editing software now that you can download or you get for free is fantastic. So you take some cracking good shots with a cell phone. If you stand back, just say, and then zoom in and take the picture, you add a lot of grain to it. So what you want to do is zoom it all the way out and get as close as you can to the image or your subject rather take the shot then after you take the shot then you zoom in the crop and that'll give you your best resolution if you already zoom in and then you zoom you crop in again on that it's going to be more pixelated take a series of shots pick out your best one and then you would crop that one here i would hit edit crop and all right we like that guy beautiful yeah. and then save there you go boom we just did a terrible crop did anyone even see that that's the last one on what were we talking about preparation h we're up to composition the first part of composition is the rule of thirds it's drawing a tic-tac-toe grid on your image and trying to place key elements at certain intersecting points or the lines on the grid. It's more of a guideline, but if you follow it, it helps you with the composition of your image. That leads me to your biggest friend in photography, especially editing, and that's cropping. So. No fish is going to just line up on the thirds for you. It's just not going to work out. So you're going to do the best you can to take the best picture you can. And then it's up to you to crop it to make it more appealing and make the composition better using things like the rule of thirds and whatnot. And especially taking out things that are unsightly distractions in the background and what have you. That leads me to focus. The image should be sharp. The eye must be in focus. If nothing else, the eye has to be in focus. And you should leave space in front of the fish. Don't make it look like the fish is swimming into a wall. Leave leave some room. Leave more room in front of the fish than behind it. So it's just more appealing to the viewer. All right, this is for, it's a little more advanced. If you have a little bit of Photoshop or a little editing program, you could see uh, the filter. You could see the, on the bottom, you could see the, silicone line you could see half of another fish and in front on top of the fish and in front of the fish you see little white dots and I'll show you what it looks like when I clean this stuff up you can see I got rid of all the unsightly dots the filter is gone the half of fish is gone the white silicone line is done gone I filled everything in in black and it just makes a better composed picture and it's more sightly it takes a little bit of work but sometimes that's what it takes Here's another shot at the angels. You can see the filter on the right, silicone on the bottom, little dot over the over the mouth, some dots in the back. And you see the second angel fish in the back? I kind of nipped off the top of the uh, dorsal fin. And it's a no-no. You shouldn't nip anything off of any of them. But sometimes it happens. But you try to avoid it. And this is what it looks like cleaned up silicone gone dots gone that fin nip is still there i notice it and now you notice it but look it's still a decent shot uh filters gone blackened everything in and that's some of the things you know you do to make a better image in closing i want to say it's not the type of fish that you're shooting it's the quality of the image doesn't matter what kind of fish you have. You could be up against lionfish, tigerfish, bearfish. It just doesn't matter. If the quality of your image is better than theirs, then you win the race. It's as simple as that. Just to prove a quick point before I go, here's one of the prettiest fish in our hobby. This is the marine better. This is a, well, not a great shot, but it's a shot of a marine better. Now, one of the most 
bland, I, you could say boring fish in our hobby, is the female guppy. And I'm going to put some female guppy shots up against this and show you that you can have a better shot of a more boring fish than the most exciting fish. 